Hello everybody, this is Marcelle and my lovely Here we go husband, again. Here we go Vito. again. Yes, yes, <laughs> and yes. That's what I'm talking about. Do it. And thank you for watching you guys. Thank you for joining us once again. Once and for again. those Y'all not tired of us yet? Y'all not tired of us? <laughs> Hello? Those who are new, welcome, welcome to the process. And today what we're going to be talking about pretty much is dating. Yes. And as children of God, you know, our testimony, as you will, in regards to dating and the do's, the don'ts, why we should and why we should and all that good stuff, you will kind of find out our thoughts about dating as children of God and um, the things that we actually experienced when it came to dating prior to us um, being connected, getting connected together. Yes. And also when we got connected. So yeah. if you are interested in the kissing, dating, goodbye type of thing, stay tuned. We will be back. Sure will. All right, baby, we are back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about dating. Dating, dating, dating. Dating, baby. Dating, and, baby. Um, I want to go on a date. First of all, let's let's start from before we met. Okay. I'm going to kind of give you a, a, a glimpse of my world and my 10 years of waiting for God to send my man to me. And my um, thoughts she was like about, Mother Teresa about my thoughts in dating, and this is what happened. And in my process of waiting, I realized that when I would go out with someone, it was a date. However, we were not dating, which means we did not put a title on. This is my girlfriend. This is my boy. It wasn't. It was one of those get to knowing the person on a date. And my uh, my thoughts about the whole thing is once I go on a date with the guy, you pretty much know if this is God or not. Because if you're praying prior to, if you're praying during, God will reveal to you, cut it off. This is not your husband. Don't waste your time. Keep moving. All right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do. So a couple of guys I would see, we would go out to eat on a date and... That was it. God would cut it. it. It wasn't anything that was a bad thing. We just realized, nah, this is not God. So a couple of those things kind of went, you know, a couple of dates kind of went here and there. And, and I realized, God, is this really you? Is is it my, do you, is it the, your purpose for me is to be going out on dates with different guys? Or is this time that you want to spend with me to get myself together for the guy you want to send me? So I'm not saying dating is bad. It just didn't work for Marshall. Okay. God wanted me all to himself because he had some things he had to do within me. And I realized when we date as women, when we date, we have this awesome imagination. And because we're so emotional, <laughs> we've all, that guy is already our husband. We've already had children. Yeah, I already ordered the we, wedding we, cake. We're, we're there. Because in our mind, okay, I wonder if he's the one. He's got to be the one. Is he not the one? Oh, my goodness, he's saved. He's got to be the one. And not necessarily. Mm. So I kissed dating goodbye. Bye. I did. And it was just all about me and my husband, God. That was it. It was just me and him. My intimacy with God, my relationship with, with God, my fellowship with friends and, and family, that's what it was. So if he was my if he was not my husband, I didn't waste my time. Mm. And I even knew that prior to having to go out. If someone was to ask me, Why show you wanna go out? No. Because I knew now my relationship with God was so special. To where before I even before they would even approach me, I would know. Or God would keep him at bay because I've already prayed. God, if he's not my husband, keep him at bay. Don't let him approach. But there are some bold, you know, jokers out there. <laughs> they will approach. But they, that's a dead giveaway. You know that's not the one, right? So I did kiss dating goodbye until God 
sent my husband and for those who have not seen the video of how he sent my husband I want you to click this link up there um, when you finish watching this one or just come back to this one and see how God actually sent my husband without me having to date him first mm -hmm. she is absolutely correct <laughs> so it is possible that God can miraculously yeah. send your husband, ladies, without you having to date him, not first. having to date him yeah. first, not having phone um, conversations with him, not having late night, you know, rendezvous with him. It happened. I met my husband prior to us going out, prior to us having conversation. When God connected us, then all of that came. The, date, our, the dating, well, the courtship came after, and we never dated. Right, each right. Other. So, even after that, that's <clears throat> when we got to know each yeah. other. So, it is possible. Yeah. Secondly, we want to talk about my husband. Yeah. His testimony is a little different. It is. It really <laughs> is, y'all. It's jacked up. It's the truth now. It's, 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 it's a little different. It's, it's jacked up. <laughs> Men can really, really... Um, you can learn a lot from this crazy joker here. And women, you can learn a lot from what crazy jokers like me do. Stupid stuff, you know, just stupid. At least you honest, babe. Hey, that's what I do. I be honest, but I'm stupid. That's with what it. I like. You know, that's I'm what just I like. being stupid with it. <laughs> you know, but you know what? I, I would say, uh, uh, my definition, first of all, is, is dating, which really, actually, I did not learn this until after, of course. Okay. Okay, of course, you know, when I got delivered, because in my first marriage, of course, I had, you know, been married for, you know, for a long period of time. And uh, after that, after the divorce, uh, I would say maybe about a good you know, six months after that, maybe, maybe six months, I started to, you know, get involved to, involved with a relationship and um, start dating. Now, at that time, of course, I didn't know anything about, you know, um, what I was doing. To be honest with you, because, you know, I was so used to wanting to be with somebody that just kind of transitioned over. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, after that, re that relationship was I was dating that person for a whole year. And let me tell you this. By me dating this person for a whole year, I had already had up in my mind how I wanted her, you know, to look, I, how I wanted her to be shaped. See, women, young ladies, you have to understand this is how men are. It only takes a man no more than five seconds to be able to scope a woman out from the top of her head all the way down to her feet. Wow. <laughs> yeah, five a man, a man fat, five seconds. We are able to see your, 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 your facial structure, uh, your shoulder, your breasts, your stomach, your hips, your booty, your, booty. your legs. And the, the main thing is when you walk. Yo walk, yo walk, ready to switch up, you got on my cow. That walk, I'm telling you, if you got all of those things in the play, you will draw a man. Listen, listen, you will draw a man first who is basically operating more in his fleshly side mm -hmm. than the spiritual side. Absolutely. Because he's looking at, because a man, his makeup, his nature is basically to pursue and also go after what he see. So he, a man normally always have a personal preference and he visualizes what a woman or what his type of woman is. Just like a woman, she visualizes what type of man she That's likes right. to be with. Okay, so women, men have the same thing. Now listen, now don't take this and, and run with this and say, ooh, my, oh girl, you heard what he said? My goodness, I know I'm going to throw these tight jeans on and make him. See, now you're going to attract a man who's more in the flesh. In other words, he's not going to be paying attention to your emotional side. He's not going to be paying attention to your needs as far as what's in your heart. He's not going to be really paying attention to your conversation. You're He's not going to be paying attention to your relationship with God. <laughs> He's not going to be paying attention to the main core things as a child of God, what he needs to be paying attention to. Because he's going to be looking more on your physical physique, your outward appearance, not what's on the inside. So if you want to draw some man like that, what I'm here to tell you is not going to be from God. It's going to be a man that's going to be lusting after your body. And that's all what he's going to see you as is a piece of lust, a piece of flesh. 
just to satisfy him. Yes, he take you out to dinner. Yes, he take you to the movies. There's yes, he gonna buy that. But there is a motive behind it. Why? Because he wants to get in them drums. <laughs> you better hear me good here. You better hear me good now. Okay, so when I dated this individual, I ain't go before God because remember now, if you look at the video when we when we was talking about my process of how God delivered me out of, um, of me pursuing women and, and every woman that he told me that I had in my life, I chose them. He never chose them. So after, uh, before I got delivered from that, before God approached me with that and before he corrected me with that, I was dating this young lady for a whole year. Mm. Okay, listen, when I saw this lady... At a particular place. Just cheating I cheating on me, y'all. Just listen, y'all. I mm -hmm. said, I said, now that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what I like. That's, that's what, what I, I like <laughs> right there. That's what I like. She had the right type of walk that I like, which I didn't even know that my wife now I didn't even know that she has the type of white a walk that I like. Mm -hmm. God hid me from this joke. Yeah, <laughs> you hear what I'm saying, huh? I was going after something that I had a personal preference on. I was going after something that basically I wanted. Listen to what I'm saying. I wanted. I was going after that. That means that I was following the lust of my flesh. Hmm. My flesh was controlling me. And I was obeying what my flesh was saying. Because that I had a history of doing it. So you so never got before God. I never I never got before God. It was after I had made a decision. Listen to me. When I made a decision to date this person, God bless that's you. when I started approaching God with it. Why? Because I realized that even after I got with this individual, it was nothing but confusion. Hmm. All the time. Arguments, disagreements, unnecessary stuff. But because I, I'm a man, listen ladies, Men have this thing that they deal with and they struggle with it all the time. And it is called pride. Pride. How you spell pride? P-R-I-D-E. Yeah. <laughs> men have a problem with that. It's hard for a man to admit when he's wrong based on he believes that when he's right about something. It's very hard. So I, me, when I was in this relationship with her, I just knew that God was going to endorse me. So we start dating. Listen to what I just said. We start dating. Yes, she was my girlfriend. Yes, I was her boyfriend. You see the difference? Listen, when, when, when God blessed my wife and I now to come together, we were not dating. She was not my girlfriend. She was, I was not her boyfriend. But we were husband and wife getting ready to go into marriage. See the difference? We was in courtship. So to me, dating is like you're trying to... Um, Manipulate for ma Yeah, it's like you're Make trying it. to really do it your way. You, you are trying Open to... Straight. And that's the purpose of dating. Because if you think about when a person be dating, what are they really dating for? They dating to try to see if what? If it's something that is gonna ultimately come out of them dating. That means that they already they want it. this one somebody in there in that relationship, they somebody wanna get married. Mm -hmm. Right? right. It, sometimes it can be the majority of the time to be the y young lady who wants to get married. And the man, he may throw up an excuse and say, well, I ain't ready to get married right now. Because, you know, I'm just kind of going through some time right now. And I've been hurt so and so and so. And, you know, he may not want to. But it's normally generally the woman. She's always want to be in that position where I want that husband. I desire to be to be that wife, and I want this man to be my husband. So now when you are dating, that's what that individual is doing. Either, either she's doing it or he's doing it. One of the two. Somebody is trying to find out. I want to know if this is going to be my wife. So I'm going to date them. This is going to be my boyfriend. And that's going to be my girlfriend. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have those two. Hold that thought. Then you have those who are dating multiple people at the same time. Now that's sort of like a, uh, what would you call that? That's sort of like a player, baby. He's like a player. And let, let me tell you the difference. Because it's not just a he. Females do the Ooh, same what, thing. Did you say a female do that? Yes. And what happens is a lot of people may think, well, how in the world am I going to know 
this is my husband or this is my wife if I don't date different people mm. and, and, and see the personality to see which one is better for me and to see which one is more nicer to me or to see which one was, you know, will serve me, you know, better, which one looks the best, you know, which one has the most money. So we do our comparison within this little circle that we have of people that we're seeing. I mean, that you're doing it your Again, own way, right? That's not God, because you're trusting in your own ability, ability that's right. to select the one you, you want, want versus allowing God, God to select the one he, he has for you. you. Yes. Trust me, he had. Y'all, do we have to talk about this? God already knows the future. Right. He already has a plan for your life. Yeah. He already knows who he has set aside waiting to introduce him, her, to you. Yeah. Why do we feel like we have to <clears throat> take it upon ourselves yeah. to be little G God? Yeah. Because whenever you say, well, how am I going to know? If you have a relationship with God, you will know. That's right. And he will reveal it to you in due time. When he knows that you ready. And when it happens, yeah. you will know. Trust me. Here it is. <laughs> you hey, will know. Is. Hold on. Hold up your hand too. <laughs> hey, here you go. We, we live in testimony. But We're they, not telling you something that we think, hope, wish. We tell yeah. you what we what we have experienced ourselves. If you have a true, mm -hmm. and I, I will always go back in my videos, you will hear me always reiterating the importance of having a relationship with God. Amen. When yeah. you have Great. a true relationship with your awesome. daddy, yeah. you're going to know what your daddy is going to do for you. You're gonna, He's going to tell you. You're going to be able to trust him and not yourself. And not only that, when you're with multiple people at the same time, now you, you're playing with people's emotions. Yes, I was going to ask you, can I say something about that? Mm -hmm. About the emotional part, because listen, let me let me just share this with you right quick. Like, let me just finish this up. Um, after, <clears throat> okay, while well, I was dating this young lady for a whole year, all the time that I wasted, not just not just hurting myself, but also hurting her. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I'm the one that basically pursued her, mm -hmm. right? Okay, yes, she the one accepted me, but guess what? I'm still responsible because on my own actions because I didn't have to pursue her. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? If I would have went before God and said, God, if this is this is my wife, this is one that you wanted me to be with, God would have been told me no. Because God would have not wanted neither one of us to waste our time. So what happens is that what happened with us is that when we before we broke up, there was so much damage that was done emotional damage. We were arguing all the time. Listen to what I'm saying. It was always confusion all the time. We was always silent on the phone. Uh, we was When we hang around each other, you can tell it was nothing but tension. What I'm trying to tell you is that God was already telling me to leave that alone, but I was not strong enough to leave it alone because I convinced myself that it was God. A lot of times you can convince yourself mm. that God is doing something, but it ain't God. It's really what your pride and your own self-ambition is telling you, but you can't see it's your pride. You only thinking that it's God, but it's really not God mm. because God is not the author of confusion. Right. Okay, so with that being said, I had to let it go. Now, let me check this out. I wasn't strong enough to let it go. Mm. Even though still... I knew God was telling me to let it go. So let me tell you what I prayed. Check this out. I said, God, listen. I'm not strong enough to let this go. And, and the reason why is because I the one chose her. And I chose her based on what I liked. So anytime that you like that Mercedes, you don't want to let that Mercedes go. <laughs> you don't want to let that BMW and that Ferrari go. You invested all that you, money. You invested all, all of that money, all that time in there. You don't fix that thing up, and that thing is right. But now you see you want to. Uh, God yeah, tell you to let it go. Just gotta let it go. Uh uh. Let it go. It looked like a TAO. <laughs> look like a TAO. That's what I'm talking about. And let me tell you, I prayed that prayer, and I said, God, I ain't strong enough to let this go now. I'm not strong enough. To let it go because I'm confused. Listen to what I'm saying to God. I remember my prayers. God, I'm confused. You know God is not the author of confusion. God is clear about everything he says. And here I am talking. I said, God, 
I'm not showing up, but if you touch your heart to let me go, I say I receive it. Be careful what let you me tell you something. for it. <laughs> that young lady told me, she said, Vita, I just I just don't see us being together. I just don't see us being husband and wife. Is this before or after you proposed? Hmm. Yeah, and not only that, y'all, I proposed. Yeah, don't leave that out. Yeah, I proposed to her because here I am again. Here you go, man, stupid man. You know, I proposed to her thinking that that was going to convince her. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? I put all of this energy into trying to convince her I'm your husband. I'm your husband. I'm the one that God chose for you. How stupid I am to tell somebody what God chose for them when they, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they supposed to be a child of God too now And I'm a child of God Hey God chose me for you Like <laughs> like, like I'm God And I'm going to convict her heart And she going to wake up one day Oh yes he was right God did. What? Are you kidding? See that's how much pride men have And how much Oh my God We're just stupid sometimes But listen She said no hmm. In the proposal I had the ring and everything Took it back Got my money back. <laughs> listen, y'all, listen. Then I'm going to sit up there about a couple of days later, call on the phone and say, I don't think God really put us together. Duh! She don't told you that. You still wouldn't listen. But God was answering my prayers mm -hmm. because God was saying, son, that's the woman that you chose. And then after that, you know, he said, that's the woman you chose. That's not the one that I have for you. But that's when he started to deal with me. After we broke up, it was a done deal. I really believed that I was like, okay, I got delivered, but I needed that strength. And I needed her to be the one to release me and let me go. Because she knew in her heart that I was not the one for her to. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But we dated for a whole year, y'all. And it was a waste of time. I'm just but, saying. And, and remember, too. You just got out of a relationship. I got out of a marriage so, for 14 just years, Just think about the time that he spent with this young lady that was not his wife was really the time that God wanted to heal him yes. from his previous marriage yeah. for 14 years. 14 years, yeah. To prepare him for me. <laughs> yeah. But then, he, again in the flesh, yeah. bless his heart, yeah. he got involved in another relationship. And on, I want, and on top of that, yeah. oh, we have more. He yeah. got involved with other women yeah. after that. Yeah. And, and and when she's talking about involved with other women, well, let me just go ahead and break this down to you. Um, after that relationship was over with, tell the truth. Here I am. Me. Here I am, stupid again. All right. <laughs> All the young ladies start coming at me, and of course, you know, here I am, opening myself up to them again. No, I was not dating no one. But yes, I was talking on the phone with them and conversing with them, mm -mm -mm. seeing them. But that was my fault. Here I am again, opening up the door for me to basically give a, another young lady false hope. False hope off of my stupidity. Off of me not allowing God to take me through my process of healing to stop pursuing a wife. See... And uh, what's crazy about it is this, y'all. He just delivered me out of a whole year relationship with somebody. 14 year relationship? Now one year relationship? One year year relationship. And here I go again. So that was something that I had to get delivered from. And I had started talking to these young ladies on the phone. And when I talked to them on the phone, you know, I already knew that they liked me. And to be honest with you, young ladies, and, and I mean, that really aroused my ego. I mean, I'm being honest with you. That made me feel more like, you know, okay, well, yeah, okay, now, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, there is somebody out there. Why? Because I felt like I was rejected after 14 years when someone told me that they didn't want the marriage no more. Click. Then I go into a one-year relationship when a person said, no, I ain't going to marry you and you're not my husband. Click. Okay? So now I'm feeling like, okay, okay, since y'all don't want me, oh, no, 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 it's going to be somebody out there that's going to want veto. Trust me. A bunch of them and then the next thing you know, a whole bunch of them started coming at me, and it was wrong because mm -hmm. that was an opportunity for me to say, you know what? Maybe it's something going on with Vito. Mm. It has nothing to do with these young ladies. It has nothing to do with my first marriage. It had nothing to do with my year-long relationship. 
Even in my first marriage, it was veto. I take responsibility for what it is I did wrong. In the year marriage, I take responsibility. Why? Because I wasn't supposed to be with none of them anyway. See, I did that, you know, and I acknowledge that. And then after that, these young ladies was coming at me and here I am again, you know, not really, you know, no going on no dates or anything, but still talking on the phone when it was still a waste of time. Right. And it was giving them false hope, especially when they already had, they was very interested in me anyway. A lot of times you we know. mistake. When people come, well, we can just be friends. You know, oh, Lord. you know that that statement, you guys, that's very popular. We we just friends. Whenever you hear someone say we just friends, mm. they're not just friends. Well, you, you say he just, just a friend. Well, you say he just a friend. Oh, baby, you <laughs> you got what I need. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> It's hard, that song. it's hard when you, you can't just be a friend with someone that you know you have interest in. That yeah. you know is not of God. You yeah. know this, right? So we have to be careful, even as ladies, talking to men on the phone. Yeah. Um, um, going out with them when you know this is not yeah. your this is not my husband. It's not your husband. It'll be it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt in the long run. I wanna tell you the truth, ladies. The young ladies that he was talking to in the yeah, phone, yeah, there was no sexual contact. No, there was no, that was rarely that they went out. Yeah, it was all emotional contact, verbally, on the phone, late night conversation, yeah, getting yeah. to know each other, um, sharing intimate, uh, you know, things about each other. Yeah. As women, we have to be careful when we Please do that. Please be careful, yeah. Because now you're putting yourself in a position where you are, you're likely to get hurt. Oh, well, you will get nine, hurt. Yeah. Nine point nine percent of the time, yeah. you if it's not God, oh, you're gonna get hurt. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can say I can say hundred yeah. percent. You will get hurt if it's not God. Yeah. You will get hurt emotionally. Like I said. The way we already, I did it. We've already yeah. attached yeah. ourselves. We've yeah. already connected ourselves yeah. with this man. Yeah. And innocently enough with men, and now he's talking to all these other women. Yeah. yeah. And young ladies, understand, yeah. you may be talking to him only, but he's not just talking to you. Right. Only. There's someone else that he's talking to. And vice well. versa. If he has not been delivered, mm -hmm. okay, if he has not been delivered, and we're, talking, from, we're just talking in general. From Everybody pursuing, is like this, yeah. yeah. If he has not been delivered from pursuing a wife or pursuing a young lady, if he has not been delivered from not doing it, because remember, it is not the man's job to pursue. See, that's what we've been taught. It's the man's job to go before God and let God be the one to prepare him and he will bring the woman unto him. In the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve, he laid Adam down to sleep. Once he laid Adam down to sleep, he plucked the rib out of Adam. He formed and created Eve. Adam was still asleep when God was still developing a relationship with Eve. When God woke Adam up, Bam. he brought the woman. Whoop, listen to me. <laughs> woman unto the man. That's scripture now. Woman unto the man. Adam didn't see Eve from a far distance and said, Oh, let me go get her. No, no, no. Adam stood still. And God brought the woman unto the man. And when he brought the woman unto the man, then Adam's eyes were open. And now Adam spoke out of his mouth. Now this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And he now. found he who findeth. Yes. He, he, you know, he didn't go like, when I say pursue, he didn't go after and pursue it. You know. I he, think that's he, what people think the, when you yeah. say he who find it. Like you gotta go and look for the, no, the, the females. Uh -huh. They find them. No, at, no. They all up in the bushes. No. I gotta go find them. Find that you can still be still and wait on God, men. And God bring the woman unto you. you do you understand what I'm saying? So, so we have to understand that. So if he has not been delivered from that, then what's going to happen is that he's not only going to be talking to you, mm -hmm. but he's going to be talking to someone else. Why? Because he's pursuing. Mm -hmm. He's trying to go. He's trying to find that one on his own. 
and you unfortunately you are going the results on your end is going to come down. In other words, he has to go to sleep. You know, God he, God showed me that a long time ago. Is that he wants a man to be asleep. He wants that man to stay asleep. When it, God wakes you up. Define that. Okay, being asleep. In the spirit. In the spirit realm, being asleep means that he does not pursue what he wants. And he can't see what he God is doing. He can't see but he's what God is doing. God. But he's trusting God. He's being patient. And he's allowing God to continue to shape and mold him. He's not putting himself in no situations that will cause him to start operating in his nature of pursuing. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now he's asleep now. He's sleepwalking. Meaning that he's basically doing his responsibility. He's still asleep. Meaning that he's, he's not about looking. His father's he's business. about his father's business. That's what he's about. That's what sleep is. He's going to sleep. But when God wakes him up, he, then he's going to be able to identify who his wife is and God is going to tell him, you know, who his wife is and it's going to be a confirmation thing. That's when now he's no longer asleep now. Now he's awake. And that's what God has always instituted when God connected. So 